Hey folks, Patriot Nurse here again, and in this segment, and this is the second segment in my burn care unit, if you will, I hope to talk about second degree burns and third degree burns a little bit and how to care for each one, and also some non-traditional methods for caring for these burns. Methods that, for instance, are having excellent results in places like India, but aren't being used so much here in the U.S. So let's go ahead and we'll charge forth into it. And let's talk about the second degree burns. Now, if you um, have missed our first segment on first degree burns and immediate first aid, please go back and watch that because that's kind of the ground level basis for what I'm talking about now. I'm assuming now that you know all about blanching indicators like we talked about and also immediate first aid of burns. So with the second degree burn, after you've cooled the affected area with cool running water and you look at it and you're thinking, oh, okay, this doesn't quite look like a regular sunburn or a mild first degree burn because, gee whiz, now I have some open skin, okay? You may have either open skin or you may have a blister, like a big boiling blister. It looks like a pot that's been turned upside down. It's like, like an astrodome or something. That's, that's kind of what it looks like. With the milder second degree burns, I'm going to kind of classify this into 2.0, 2.5, and 2.75. Okay? That's just my own little classification system because I think that it just makes sense to me that type of way. So, in the 2.0s, 2.0s are the mild second degree burns. They are typically caused by splattering liquids. Okay? Or brushing up against an exhaust pipe of a motorcycle, okay? And with, with the formation of a blister in a second degree burn, there is, there's, let, let me just put it to you straight, there is a lot of debate in a lot of back and forth, a lot of very heated debate, people saying, don't you dare take that blister off, and but people are saying, leave it for 48 hours and then pop it. And the, so, from my own research, and again, I'm not responsible for anything, use your own discretion, etc. From my own research, the literature to me seems to say that if you're looking at a child and they've got a, a, a blister burn on the palm of their hand, that you leave it for 48 hours and then you kind of drain it and clean it and, and prevent, prevent infection from spreading. And with adults, you kind of just do whatever. <laughs> um, so make your own decision about that because a lot of people are like, don't touch the blister, but let's be realistic. Are you really going to leave a blister the size of a golf ball on your hand for 7 to 10 days? No, you're not, okay, because you're not going to be able to put up with it if you're an adult. Just saying, a little bit of reality check there. So let's talk about the second degree burns, okay. The 2.0s, when you depress the skin, you look for the blanching indicator, it is going to blanch. The skin is going to turn white and then the red will come back, okay? So you know, all right, it's, it's still a second degree burn. It's not too, too bad. We're, we're, we're still getting good capillary refill here, okay? So with a second degree burn, the traditional method here is that once the area is cooled down, you look at it and if there's debris in it, you're going to use some sterile saline. Sterile, never been used for anything else. Brand new, clean. And you're going to irrigate the area, the broken skin, and kind of get the, the nastiness out of there. And then cover it with a non-adherent pad. This is a Telfa pad. Cover it with a non-adherent pad and some gauze and end up changing this thing probably two to three times a day because it's going to be leaking fluid. All right, It's going to be weeping weeping clear fluid usually. There's a lot of dressing changes in there and let me tell you, you think you got enough medical stuff now? You just wait until you get a larger burn, like maybe the burn about half the size of a palm that keeps leaking fluid. You're going to be changing that thing probably two and three times a day and you're going to go through your supplies really fast. So, just saying there. So, with the second degree burns, they're, they're generally, they're painful um, and like we said with the first degree burns, in the immediate kind of just after the the first aid phase when I'm still cooling this burn go ahead and get get an ibuprofen or an inset in this person okay get ahead of the pain unless it's contraindicated for them and you know who you are if you can't take insets go ahead and get that in their system that's going to decrease the overall inflammatory process and it's going to help get ahead of their pain okay so go ahead and get that in their system 
Now, another thing to consider, like we talked about in the other videos, is, is to go ahead and give them good doses of vitamin C and vitamin D. Because the thing that you have to worry about with a second degree burn, especially one that's broken the skin, infection. Okay? Infection, infection, infection. So go ahead, get a, get a temperature on these people and monitor that temperature just to make sure they're not getting infected. If you look at this wound and it starts to look pussy, like it's draining yellowish type of stuff that looks more like potato soup instead of clear chicken broth, then you're looking at infection here. It'll smell, it'll, it'll look really gross. Antibiotics may be in order then. And the, one of the antibiotics that's used most frequently is gentamicin. And um, that, that's just my two cents on that. So, let's talk about the 2.5s. Okay, so we have the 2.0s, which you have just the top layer of involvement here. And you press, and you look for your blanching indicator, and the skin turns white, and then the red comes back. With your 2.5s, you're not going to see that. Okay? With your 2.5s, when the skin is depressed, it's not going to turn white. It's going to stay stable red. When you see that, and it, it's not like it's just, oh, it's a touch. It's, it's depressed, and then you look, okay? If you're depressing that area, and it doesn't turn white, you're looking at a deeper wound, okay? And the skin may or may not be broken, okay? That's the thing about second-degree burns, is it, it, there's, it, there's so much up in the air depending on whether or not the skin is broken, okay? But if the skin is broken, infection, infection, infection. you got to watch for it. So when you look at your 2.5s, your deeper second degree burns, and you, you look for that blanching indicator, it's not going to be there. And that should tell you that this is a deeper wound, okay? When you see that, you need to make provision in your head, okay, I'm going to need to give this person more food, more protein to heal up, okay, because it has gone deeper. Now, the, the care of third degree burns, in the modern world, what we have is with somebody who has a third degree burn, almost always they're going to get, unless it's just a very small one, almost always they're going to get a skin graft, okay? And third degree burns, they have a ton of scar tissue that they create, and if it's over, if the burn is over an area like a wrist or an ankle or, or uh, a movable joint, you're going to have to do range of motion exercises with them, and that is really painful because what happens with third degree burns, they get leathery, they look yellow or charred, or basically you burn down to the to the bone sometimes. You burn down to the bone or the underlying fat, so there's a lot of scar tissue that's created and a tremendous risk for infection. But you're also going to have long-term issues as far as usage of that joint. So that's just something to keep in mind. But realistically, in a survival situation, you're not going to have access to a skin graft. So what do you do? You just do the care for the second degree really, really, really well and a whole lot longer. And pray for the best because you're not going to get a skin graft probably. So just a thought there. Now, infection, monitoring for infection, keeping the person comfortable, keeping ahead of their pain. That's a big thing here with second degrees. With third degrees, the proper third degree burn, you're probably not going to be able to feel anything. Why is that? Because you burnt through the nerve. Not a good thing. <laughs> um, so as far as how do, you, how do you generally care for these people, the overall things that I can tell you are, number one, prevent infection. Maintain skin integrity and prevent infection. Okay. The other thing is to, to take care of the pain because if they're dealing with pain a lot and they're stressed and, and, and frustrated and just overwhelmed with pain, pain can be overwhelming, they're not going to heal as well. Okay. So that's why I say go ahead and while you're cooling this, go send somebody to get an ibuprofen or, or you know, an NSAID or some kind of pain relief in their system, period, okay. and monitor that and keep up with the pain. Now. Let's talk about the non-traditional types of dressings here. And I was not taught the non-traditional way in, in nursing school. However, if you look at the nursing, in nursing databases and various nursing research, there is a lot of promise in using alternative, alternative therapies, even if they've been around for thousands of years, even if the Egyptians, the ancient Egyptians used them. There's a lot of promise with them. And the first one that I speak of is honey, okay? Honey, yes, you heard right. In a second degree burn, after the initial cooling phase, the honey burn care method is, after you've cooled the area, then you immediately pour honey into it. Honey, and then you, you cover it up real good and then slack a, a, 